one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling, and my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit and power so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, I love your commands. Lord, I love your commands. How I love your law, O Lord. It is my meditation all the day. Lord, I love your commands. Your command has made me wiser than my enemies, for it is ever with me. Lord, I love your commands. I have more understanding than all my teachers when your decrees are my meditation. Lord, I love your commands. I have more discernment than the elders because I observe your precepts. Lord, I love your commands. From every evil way I withhold my feet, that I may keep your words. Lord, I love your commands. From your ordinances I turn not away, for you have instructed me. Lord, I love your commands. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue intently looked at him. And he said to them, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Is this not the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb. Physician, cure yourself and say, do here in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah when the sky was closed for three and a half years and severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, 
but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, church. Well, today's Gospel reading, we are presented uh, with the challenge of conversion for ourselves. The people whom Jesus was proclaiming the reading to as he sat in the synagogue were people who would have known him. He's in his hometown. They were familiar with him. And as he proclaimed the word of God and he taught and preached, they were amazed. And they were impressed. They liked how he presented and what he had to say until he exposed their weaknesses and their sin and their shortcoming. Because they were surprised that this average guy, son of Joseph, had this wisdom in supposedly doing these miracles. So Jesus likens them to two stories, the widow in Zarephath and Naaman, the Syrian. So your, your homework today, here's your homework. When you get home some point today, go read 2 Kings chapter 5. This is the story of Naaman. Read the whole story. It's, it's the, the whole chapter. It's, uh, it's a powerful story of Naaman going through his conversion and encountering the Lord in a way that he did not expect. So those here listening to Jesus were encountering the Lord in a way they did not expect, nor were they looking for, nor were they interested in, in actually dealing with their shortcomings. When you get to the story of Naaman, he actually has been a military leader who is conquering the Jewish people. And they've captured a Jewish girl who now lives in his home, basically a slave. He has leprosy. She says to him, the prophet in my country, the one who knows the true God, can heal you. So Nathan goes and makes this trek. And you'll read later today when you get there how the prophet Elisha tells him to go bathe in the river. And he says, no, I'm not going to go bathe in the river. And he leaves because the river's disgusting. It's dirty. It's, you can just imagine if somebody had given you the instruction, go bathe in the Ohio River and you will be healed. <laughs> uh, nobody would think that that's going to work. And he leaves. And then he's entreated by his servant. No, go back. And, and, and he finally listens to the word of the prophet. And he does what he says, and he finds redemption. He finds healing. Jesus chided the hearers in the synagogue because he knew they were not going to conform their lives to that which was being, what was being proclaimed. And so the Lord invites us today to be open to the Lord bringing us the answer to our prayers in ways that maybe we didn't expect, in ways that are challenging to us, challenging to me. I'm talking to me today. Because the Lord wants our heart. He wants us to grow in holiness. 
and rarely does it ever come in the way in the package that we want it to. It almost always comes in ways that we would never choose. Let us listen to the Lord today as we approach the Eucharist and see how the Holy Spirit is drawing us to be open to the leading of the Lord in our lives. Amen.